Hey everybody, it's Jason from Collision Hub. Uh, we're back here with Tony from Dan Am. A few years ago, Tony and, and Collision Hub shot some videos on air pressure and volume and some considerations for refinishing. And we're still getting questions on that today, so we want to give you a little update on that, a little refresher, and remind us a little bit. So Tony, what are some of the challenges with having too much pressure at the spray gun? Well, I think the biggest thing that we see today yet is people who still regulate um, by sound, and they're not using the regulators on the wall like they should. Um, Many shops have improved that over the years. Obviously, we've done a lot with Dan M Air and sonic filtration and regulation to help improve that. But we still have some places where when you walk in the paint booth and plug into a hose, where you'll have 100 PSI at the hose. And we get that on the, we get phone calls in our repair station a lot that'll, you're talking to them and go, well, plug your gun in and pull the trigger. And then you ask them, do they sandblast in their paint booth? And, they, <laughs> and they'll say, no. Uh, they'll say, why do you need 100 PSI to your paint gun? And so as simple as that, sounds um, it is reality and so the important parts that you have to remember with a spray gun is if I only need 26 psi at this spray gun and this is an RP version this only uses 10 CFM and usually a range of pressures from 18 to 29 is all we're using and so there's no need to have 110 or 120 psi but by regulating at the wall down to close to what I need so if I need 26 psi I may regulate it at the wall so that when I pull the trigger I only have maybe 30 PSI here, um, then I make my final adjustments with my air micrometer knob. And this air micrometer at the rear of the spray gun, adjust that down a small amount to get to my regular operating pressure. And of course you want to check it at half trigger, but you also want to check that pressure fully pulled. So check that before you start your paint job. Now once I have that pressure set at that gun, the biggest differences that we see are CFM volume versus air pressure. And where we see the difference is in air volume, this gun needs 10 CFM as an RP. If I have an HVLP gun, it needs 15 CFM cubic feet per minute of air volume that it has to use. Well, it's easier to get volume through a bigger hole than it is through a little hole. The other thing is pressure. So if I need 10 CFM with this gun to get 26 PSI, and I try to, uh, I have 100 PSI coming to this gun, and I cheat that down with my air micrometer knob to full, almost closed, to get it cheated down enough to get to that low pressure. The problem is inside the spray gun, when I look in this uh, air micrometer, there's a big round hole about the dimension of a straw, large straw, that goes through that. And so if I have that hole um, fully open, aimed down that gun, air volume comes through that gun and pressure goes through that gun into the front of it. When I pull the trigger, it'll open up an air piston that opens up and lets pressure to the front of the spray gun and the air volume to the front of the gun. But if I start cheating that down too far, it turns that hole away from being centered on your air passage and it turns it all the way down to where it's blocked by the spray gun wall. And now I have a tiny hole. And now to get the volume that I need for this gun, it has to go through there with a lot higher velocity. So kind of like these straws we've got. Absolutely. So if I want to get you, Try you to could, breathe through here. I gotta get a lot of volume. You're, gonna, you're gonna have to suck air through that a lot faster. With this one, you can breathe normally. And I guess that that really is a good comparison is having those straws. Um, you don't want to be breathing through that tiny little no. straw very long. The last one. Um, but with the spray gun, what happens is when the velocity comes up, it shoots air through the horns. And these horn holes and the holes in the air cap are there to try to help you um, atomize the paint and form a proper spray fan. If you're blowing air too, with too much velocity through it, it'll blow streams of air through the paint and it leaves little bands of color that'll come off that fan and you'll notice it when you do a test pattern and you'll see these bands of color. Well now when I start to spray with that with a metallic or uh, difficult colors it'll start blowing those uh, what look like blotches or stripes into the fan. With clear coat what happens is many times you will it'll blow those bands through there where it almost over dries the clear coat. So now they're having to slow down because it's getting too dry, it's not wetting up the way they wanted. It starts to over dry it in areas and then they have to slow down and they pile more clear on trying to get it to level out. Yeah. So by just slowing the velocity down, opening this so you have a, fan, a fluid and a control wide open, but an air passage that's wide open, the velocity is slower and it brings the air volume that I need to get atomization easier at a lower pressure. So now I can have um, my clear coat laying down much smoother and you'll end up using less product. You'll end up using less base coat, less clear coat. It improves not only color match, but improves the uh, efficiency of the spray gun by having that 
done properly. So the key is not only the spray gun having the controls as close to open as yep. possible, your fluid knob open as possible, but it also means what am I using for fittings in that, in that shop? Because small holes in these fittings, a good example here, this one is a high flow fitting that uh, SADA has made. They've had these in their line for over 25 years. Um, and this is a, another competitive fitting that you'll see out there. And to see the examples of these, this one is much smaller inner diameter. And it does not allow the volume through it that obviously the bigger hole does. So that starts the problem, not just at your spray gun setting, but before that. Um, the other thing is that's important is inside of this SADA fitting, they put a Teflon seal down inside. So you can literally put this on hand tight and not have leaks. Um, rather than with this one where I would need to, you know, many times you'll see them put thread tape on it or something like that on the threads to stop a leak. The problem with that is many times in our repair station, we get guns that come in that they're saying this doesn't spray well. And we get it in and the first place we check is in the air micrometer and we'll also check inside the fan control and you'll find those bits of Teflon tape that they maybe overlap the hole with just a little bit and as soon as they start blowing through it, it just blows it through and sticks in an air passage. And as you can see here, these air passages are pretty small going through that spray gun and you don't need them to pull out Teflon tape. So we can eliminate that and go to this and fix that problem as well. Okay. So those are the biggest things that we see. Um, once we get beyond that, um, having a regulator in your paint booth is really important. You need that regulator there so that you can make the proper adjustments. Because if I'm spraying a fast clear today, many of these new high solids and even medium solids clears, they have some very fast versions. And if I'm spraying a fast version of a clear, I don't need all the air pressure that I would need for a high solids, slower drying sure. clear. And so we're typically turning the air pressure down on these as low as 18 to 22 PSI for some of these really fast products um, so that they wet up properly and lay out smooth. Um, so we need to have that ability to be able to regulate. You can regulate a little bit by using your air micrometer knob, um, but being able to adjust for different products in the booth are, are really important. And having a regulator that you can read and see is critical uh, in that paint booth. Today's colors, we're seeing some of these three and four stage materials that are just getting more and more difficult. Constant, even air pressure is critical for, for helping that process uh, in some of those jobs. So things have changed over the, since we made the last videos, yeah. you know, back somewhere 2010 or 2011. Um, but the key takeaway still key is adjust takeaway, out the wall, get your pressure close coming into the gun and then fine tune. Yep, that is absolutely uh, what's important. All right, great. Well, thanks, thanks Tony. Yep, Appreciate thank it. You.